Small businesses are the backbone of this country's economy. But every year, more than 10,000 of them fail. You know what the failure rate of gyms is? Yeah, it's 95% failure rate. You thought you were the 5%? My name is Marcus Limonis. I buy struggling businesses, turn them around, and make millions doing it. How you doing? I'm Marcus. Last season, I made deals with these companies. Thank you so much. Wow. There were successes. This used to take us forever. You should be very proud of yourselves. To say that this is a transformation is an understatement. But there were deals I walked away from. You're a thief and a liar and a cheater. You didn't do what you Get promised. Out of my face. I can make this business work with or without you. Oh my God. Who the f do you think you are? This season, the stakes are even higher. This is a $50 million business. How much do you lose this year? 400,000. Wow. How much debt do you have in the business? 6.9 million. I'm sorry, how much? The money, bigger. My offer is $1 million, $3.5 million for 75% of the business. You're asking for everything that I've ever worked for. The formula is the same. You gotta trust the process. Follow my advice. You missed a spot. And we'll make a deal. It's a yes or a no. We got a deal. You can deposit this check <laughs> as quick as you can get to the bank. Let's make it happen. This is real business. I don't have cars, but I have a good business. You don't have cars. That is good. I'm done arguing with you. This is bull My money is on the line. I don't know how you run your business this way. So failure isn't an option. Do you understand that the bank could literally show up here today and lock the doors? So I asked you to do one thing. It's my company. You want me to get in your face? The deal's off. I'm in charge. Yeah. If that doesn't work, then you can get the out. Why can't I fix this? We have to be able to work together. What are you talking about? This deal's not a good deal for me. This is the profit. <laughs> 10 miles outside of my hometown of Chicago, located in Morton Grove, Illinois, is the home of Athens Motors. In 2009, Pete Athens, a car enthusiast and successful real estate investor who made millions flipping houses, sunk his entire life savings into building his first car dealership. I created a place where you want to hang out, buy a car, sell your car. Car's worth 30 all day wholesale. Service your car, or just come by and have a cup of coffee. The project took 18 months and cost more than $4 million to complete. I've spent all my cash building this place and trying to keep it open. Come on. 1,301 month, and it's hard to get more money to buy vehicles. We're scarce on cars. He hired his cousin Tony to be general manager. Hey Mike, make sure you check that all the tires match. Okay. I'm here every day to make sure everything is perfect. And working together has strained their relationship. Tony, come to my office, please. And Tony has been talking about leaving Athens. I can't work in an environment where the owner questions every single thing you do. I repeated myself three times. You didn't fix the problem. With no cars on the lot and no process in place, Athens Motors has been losing over $1.8 million a year. If help doesn't arrive within days, Athens Motors will be forced to close its doors forever and Pete will lose his entire life savings. If I close this place down, it would be catastrophic. I'm so mad at myself. I've just arrived at Athens Motors, and I can't figure out if this place is even open. Where are all the cars? But what they do have is all super high-end. In a good used car dealership, you have to have affordable cars. They're not even close to what the market really calls for. They could be $30,000 over per car and what they actually should be carrying. Wow, look at this place. The first thing I notice in the showroom is I feel like I've just entered Caesar's Palace. Clouds painted on the ceiling. I see murals all over the place. I'm waiting for Zeus to pop out. There are no customers around, and much like the lot outside, the only thing I see are a few vintage luxury vehicles in the showroom. How you doing? I'm Marcus. Larry. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you, Larry. Pleasure, pleasure. Is this car for sale? Yes, it is. How many miles on this? Uh, 2,400. It was restored. Uh-huh. How many total cars on the lot? Uh, probably 20. Total? Total. 20 cars? 20 cars is more like a private collection than a used car dealership. A successful used car dealership is one that is built on having something for everyone. You have to have a wide array of price points and a wide array of selection.
Is Pete here? Yeah, he's in his office. I'll take you. Okay. Pete. Marcus. How you doing, buddy? Pleasure. Thank you for taking the time. Absolutely. What do you think of the place when you first walked in? It's, it's, yeah, it's built out. That's for sure. This is my soul. I design, I architect. Have you been in the car business a long time? No, I was only five years in the car business before I opened. I've put everything I have in here in my soul and my bank account. Can I give you a tour of the place? All right, let's do it. I'm the one who did everything, so I'm ready to be one of the best independent stores in the United States. We gotta get some cars first. What'd you spend on these walls? Close to 100,000, 80,000. <laughs> okay. I tried to do something right once, so I don't have to touch it ever again. You put in how much in renovating the place? A million dollars? Over two million. Wow. The ceiling alone was probably was about 15,000. So one used car? Correct. OK. I created a state-of-the-art customer lounge. What did, what did it cost to build out this whole room? Close to half a million. Come on. So like that granite, how much does that cost? I don't know, they're about 25,000 to four. And all this movie stuff, how much is that? TVs are about 15,000. The seats are 25, 30,000. Pete, why? How does any of this help you sell cars? I made this store to be the place where you want to hang out to have the best customer experience anywhere in the United States. Pete, look, customers don't want to hang out. They want to buy cars at a fair price, and then they want to go home. Well, I'm telling you what I see. So let me tell you what I see. This could be a car. That could be a car. Those could be a car. If you look at it your way, a lot of things could have been cars. Do you ever look at it that way? Um. Pete spent $100,000 on wall plaster, $15,000 in murals, and $500,000 in his customer lounge. Look, you don't have to have a college degree to know to spend over $600,000 on just those items. I mean, it's just irresponsible. Think about it like this. The average price of a used car sold in this market is $15,000. That means Pete could have used that money to buy and sell 40 cars. At an average margin of $2,000 per car, he would have made $80,000 more in a given month. What'd you pay for the building? 1.875 million. So you have a little under 4 million in the facility? Yes. How much debt do you have on the business? About 6.9 million. I'm sorry, how much? 6.9 million. 5.3 million is myself, my money, and the rest is just friends and family. Where's the money? Holding the losses to keep this place going. I'm losing over $100,000 a month for almost two and a half years. This is a bad scenario. It sounds like Pete has been financing his failed business out of his pocket for the last two and a half years. And it's been operating in the red the entire time. I need to take a closer look at these financials. Here's Erica, Hi. Hi. I'm Marcus. America. How are you? Good. Nice to meet you. Are you accounting? Well, I'm the operations manager here, so I do all the accounting, all the finance. Do you have a, a financial statement for last month? Um, the books are in your office. Sure. I'll I can do. print you one, I think. I'll you do the books, but you're not allowed to keep them. Everything stays in Pete's office. But not because you can't get it. It just stays in my office. I don't think I've ever seen a business where the accountant doesn't have control of the books. Pete needs to give Erica the tools to do her job and not hide them in his office. Right now, you're losing $150,000 a month. You're selling 10 cars. You're 50 cars short from breaking even. In order to make up for the $150,000 in monthly losses, Athens would have to sell 60 cars at $2,500 profit per car. In order to sell 60 cars, you need at least 120 on the ground. Today, you have 20. You're 100 cars short. Since the average used car sold in this area is around $15,000, buying the necessary inventory is going to cost Athens around $1.5 you need one and a half million dollars of working capital just to have enough cars to be able to sell cars to break even. I mean, it's, it's, it's a real challenge. How much money do you have in the account today? Pete. Why, do you, why are you looking at him? Because he wants to handle everything in the end anyway, so it kind of goes back to him. Between 20 and 30,000. Thanks, Erica. You're welcome. Pete's cousin Tony has been the general manager of Athens since they opened, and I want to get his perspective on the business. Are you Tony? Yes, I am. How you doing? I'm it's Marcus. A pleasure. Nice to meet you. Very so nice you're to meet the you. manager. I wear all the hats. You wear all the hats. Okay. I have been in the car business about 18 years. 
Excuse me, Mark. Yes. Hi. Hi, how are you? What can we do for you today? I am actually in the market for an SUV. You look at BMW, Mercedes, Porsche. What are you looking for? I'm kind of looking for something a little bit more modest. Okay. Ford, Chevy, maybe. The first potential buyer I've seen since I've been here walks in, and he's looking to buy an SUV. Seems motivated, excited, ready to buy. The problem is, we don't have what he wants. I wish we could help you. No, you it's know, all right. Don't maybe worry next it. time. Take care. He wants to be in an affordable car like everybody else in America, and every SUV we have on the lot is priced over $40,000. That's the frustrating thing that you deal with. How many customers a day do you get that you can't sell stuff oh, to? We, it, it's not just the walk-in customers, yeah. it's the phone calls. Yeah. It's the internet. Seems busy, the service okay. seems busy. Yeah, service does like $100,000 per month. Sometimes we do a little bit more. So in your role as general manager, how much time do you spend out here? I'm back here quite often. Those guys all report into you? Yes and no, okay. I talk to them about daily operations, but technically I don't really have authority over any department. Pete wants his finger on every single thing in the store. He micromanages. He's a very proud guy and he's a good guy. We just don't agree on a lot of things. Even the buying of the cars. We have X amount of money to spend. He wants to spend money on a $100,000 Porsche. And I'm like, it doesn't make any sense. When you have $100,000 to spend, it makes more sense to buy 10, $15,000 cars that the average working class is looking for. Tony seems to be on the ball. He seems to know what he's doing. And if Pete would let Tony do his job, this guy's got tons of car experience. They may not be in this mess. He says, I'm writing the checks, I'm writing the money, this is what we're gonna buy. That's what he does. And look what's outside, no cars. There's and no cars, anything. And, and the relationship is very strained. Athens Motors is in a lot of trouble. They're buried in debt, they don't have any cars on the ground, and there are no customers. But I know the car business, and this is a good location. The facility, while overbuilt, could be perfect with some renovations. It's important that you understand that I take relationships and business very seriously. You're almost seven million in debt. You're losing $150,000 a month. Well, that's a lot of money, Pete. And you have almost no cash. What do you stand to lose if this business closes? Yeah, I would lose my house, my dream. It would be yeah. catastrophic. Stakes are huge. 24 seven, I thought about every second of fixing this problem. Because if it doesn't work, not just the employees here and everybody else, my wife didn't sign up for that. That's not fair. But, yeah, so. Well, the stakes are big for me too. I take money very seriously. My offer is very simple. It's three and a half million dollars to help clear the debt, bring in new cars for inventory, and essentially change Athens Motors into a brand new business that makes money. And you share in the economics. And we'll be 50-50 partners, but I'm 100% in charge. Because I know this business better than you do. There's not even a question about it. So all the work that I do and all the inventory and the process that I put in, you'll share in it. I get my three and a half million back first, and we'll stay 50-50 once it's paid back. While $3.5 million is a lot of money, one way that I protect myself is by owning all of the new inventory. And so my risk is minimized. It's minimized because I can liquidate the cars and get my money back. I'm just, I'm a little concerned when you say 100% you run the business because I, I believe I, I have something special here. What's special about it? You have a used car lot with no inventory. That's your opinion. But Pete, it's not, it's not my opinion that you're in trouble. It's the facts. Well, that's, but so that's, that's... Stop saying opinion. It's just, it's, we're here. If, so in the four you... years you've been open, you've lost $4 million. There's 20 employees that work here. They're going to be out of jobs. But what I have set up is infrastructure. But it isn't just that. It's, there's no process in place. I don't care how much money you have. You can't have the right resources to actually run the business the right way overnight. I don't agree with you. I, I, There's I, nothing magical about this business. Sorry. I, 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 I believe I... The numbers don't lie. I, you spend $4 million, it's gone. There's nothing magical about it. You're you have no inventory, it's gone. And will I be able to keep the name? Keep what name? 
Athens Motors. Is the name important to you? Yes. I thought keeping the place open was important to you. So my name, I mean, that means a lot. It's about marketing and getting customers to the front door. It's not right. about putting your name on the building. I, you got to put your pride away for a minute. You're looking at it only on your end as, as an investor, as a partner. The only way this business works is if somebody that knows the business better than you is driving the process. It doesn't work any other way. I think I'm unstoppable. Pete, if you're not going to put your pride away, well, then I'm not going to do the deal. You don't need to raise your voice anymore. Well, I'm raising my voice because you keep repeating the same thing and you don't seem to understand what I'm telling you. Are you okay?